Okay, welcome back guys to part two. The first part we set up the environment and we quickly talked about stack panels and I showed you some labels and uh, we modified the stack panel um, to either go vertically or horizontally depending on which was your preference. That's pretty much all we talked about. So let's go ahead and let's start to add different functionality to this application. Let's zoom in a little bit here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a label. Actually, let's have a stack panel. Stack panel. Okay, and inside of that, let's have a label and a button. <laughs> now, if you don't know what kind of tags are accessible in WPF, I am sure there is some kind of online tutorial to give you all of the different uh, tags you could ever need. Let me look. Uh, you can just Google if you want. I, I'm not sure. Um, I kind of just learned as I go. But right now we have a button and it kind of looks weird as you can see because there's no text inside of it and it's very long. It takes up the whole space of its parent container which is the whole the whole application and we have an empty label um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a name to this label so we're gonna do x colon name and then we can name it whatever we want my preferred convention of naming is uh, whatever we want its name to be and then we end it with what kind of tag it is so main and then label to denote what kind of tag it, it really is. So it is a label. And then here I'm going to name this uh, main button. Main, if I can, geez, main button. I cannot type. And then inside of the tags we can write whatever we want our button to say. So I can say click me, exclamation point. And it might help if I put name. And uh, let's cut this out and put it in here. There we go. That works. So we have x colon name equals main button and x colon name equals main label. Those are the names. Of course, you're not going to see the names in the application itself. That is only for us to give it some kind of way to reference it and the C sharp behind it. All right, so here's the solution explorer. Here's our XAML. And then if we extend this, we can see the C sharp right here. So we have a button, we have an empty label. If I wanted to, I could put something here. Uh, this is before clicking the button. That might actually work, so we can see the change. And let's make this button a little smaller. So it has a width property, and we can do it in pixels, so let's do 100 pixels. Let's see what that looks like. And let's let's move it below, below the label. All right. So we're actually going to align it horizontally to the left. Horizontal alignment equals left. All right, now that moved it all the way over here under the label. So now we have a button and we have a label. Now when I saved, I have some kind of plugin. I forget what it is. Let me look. Is it under extensions or is it under tools? Uh, it'd be under installed. XAML Styler. If you want to, you can go under Extensions and download this. Um, what, why did I click on that? It will, every time you save it, if you have multiple attributes for a tag, it will uh, style it like this so it's easier to read. Pretty cool. Um, so we have our label and now we have our button and both are named. We have main button and main label. So what we want to do is when the user clicks on this button, actually I'm going to add another attribute real quick um, on, what is it, cursor, uh, hand. I think that'll do it. I'm curious. Let's go ahead and run this. I think if we put cursor hand, when it hovers over it, uh, it'll change it to a hand. Yeah, like that. Beautiful. Because before it would just be this this normal mouse pointer, uh, but then if we hover over it, it'll be hand like an actual button in an application. So that's cool. 
Um, so we have a name and for all of the things. So we can go actually in the code behind and write some kind of logic. Um, so what we want to do is we want to fire some kind of event when the user clicks on this button. So the event for a button when the user clicks is called, I think it's click actually. Yeah, click. Um, and then you can hit tab for IntelliSense to finish it for you. And then I just double click this new event handler. And what that will do is it'll create one based on the name that you gave it. So I gave it the name main button. So it just named this, this function whenever the user clicks main gut button underscore click. So it's really easy to know uh, when you're in the code behind, like I am now, which, you know, which event this is linked to. This is linked to main button, right? And this happens when the person clicks, the user clicks. Pretty awesome. So we have this private void main button click and object sender routed event rxe. We don't have to worry about that. Um, this, any code we put in here is just going to uh, happen when this button has been clicked. So when the button's clicked, what I want to do is I want to change the text in here. Okay, um, so we have a name for that label and pretty much we just need to change that text in the code. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's call main label. You can see it finished it for me. The IntelliSense knew what I was what I was going to look for, so I let it finish it for me by hitting tab. Then we can do dot text or content. I always get them confused. It's either text or content for different things. Is equal to, and then whatever we want it to be instead of this is before clicking the button. Um, so let's make it you clicked me or you click not me the button then end it with a semicolon cool so now we have this event main button click and the code behind right we're in main window.cml.cs every time the user clicks this we associate it with this click uh, event as an attribute so we have this click is equal to main button dot click It'll go in the code behind, it'll look for main button dot click, and it'll run the code in it. That's all it's going to do. So let's go ahead and start this. Okay. And this is before clicking the button. When we click it, you click the button. Now if we click click it, click it again, that event is going to still fire. Uh, and I'll show you how we know that real quick, but nothing's going to happen, right? Because it's just, it's changing the content of that label to this, and that's no different than what it is now. So if we wanted to, we could put a breakpoint right here. I, I meant to put it right here, but it doesn't matter. Uh, a breakpoint is really whenever this part of the code is reached, um, it'll just stop there. So let's go ahead and we put one right here, this little red dot that denotes a breakpoint, and uh, let's click it again you can see that's where it is right now in the code that that main button click event was fired and now it's ready to go through the code so if we hit F11 we can step through what is going on it's going to step through it line by line so this is the next line this is the first thing it's going to do it's going to change the content to you click the button and then it's going to reach the end of the function and there you go beautiful that's right where we are click it again it fires the same event doesn't matter how many times we do it, uh, that event will continue to fire. So if we wanted to, we could change the label to you click the button X amount of times um, after each click. So let's go ahead and create a variable in the class called uh, private int um, clicked times, click times. And then when this window is fired up, uh, we can set clicked times equal to zero. So this method right here, the method that's the same name as um, the XAML main window, is what gets fired up as soon as this window uh, is ready to be displayed. So this is the first thing that runs. So let's go ahead and set clicked times equal to zero first. 
and then we can change this to you click the button X times. So let's go ahead and increment click times. So this plus plus means just add one to it and we can change this to you click the button remove the exclamation point plus let's put a space here clicked times space times exclamation point cool so you click the button click times times and then each time that button's clicked it adds one to it let's go ahead and see if that works and let's remove the breakpoint so it doesn't stop each time you click the button one times two times three times four times five times six times and you can see I can continue click and it'll continue to increment just as we expected awesome so now we wrote our first uh, kind of event and we worked with our first part of in the code behind um, so that is all I'm going to do in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is it's going to be really fun. I'm trying to think of what we want our program to do um, in the future. And uh, hopefully I think of something cool. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I will see you, as always, in the next video.